Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Today we are headed into A Coruña, Spain. I will be visiting some of my local friends, Isabel and Russ, who will be showing us around this gorgeous town as well as several others. So make sure to subscribe, like this video, and stay tuned for more adventures. Today, actually for the next two days, I'm going to show you around A Coruña, how it is to be a local in this city with my friends I'll introduce you to in just a second. But today, day one, I'm going to take you over to the Tower of Hercules, the longest running lighthouse in I think Spain or the world, I'll check on that. I'll show you around the ocean side and some of the beaches here. It's going to be a great day. So these are my good friends, Isabel and Russ. And how did you guys end up here? We um, decided that we wanted to move here. We are originally from the UK and then we emigrated to the US and spent 15 years living in Las Vegas. And then we decided we wanted a quieter, simpler life with free healthcare. And here we are. It's like a rug. Well, dream for me. I've wanted to come and live in Spain for many, many years because Isabel and I used to come and visit because her grandma was living in Spain because her father was Spanish. And I've sort of always wanted to retire to Spain. You'll see their lovely faces throughout the video. Isabel, we had so much fun yesterday uh, laughing and talking and she's lost her voice a little bit, but we're going to have a great time. But enough of all the gabbing, let's get over to the Tower of Hercules and start showing you around this gorgeous, chill town. All right, so we're here at the Tower of Hercules and it is one of the few places that's actually open on a Monday here. Many of the museums here in Coruña are closed on Mondays. So just keep that in mind as well as restaurants. But the Tower of Hercules, the reason it's called the Tower of Hercules is because there is a legend that Hercules killed the giant Garillon at this spot. And it was with an arrow that was dipped in Hydra blood. And it was one of the 12 mythical labors that earned him a place with the gods. So it's said that the bones of Garillon are buried beneath the lighthouse and this feat was so significant you can still see the bones of Garillon in the Coruña flag as well as in the compass at the sculpture park that's near this area. So we're gonna go grab tickets and show you around the oldest working lighthouse in the world built in the first century AD. Now, if I told you all the legends about Brogan and Hercules and the history of this lighthouse, it would take up the whole video. So instead, I'm going to direct you to culturetrekking.com where I have a guide to the city, a written guide, including an interactive Google map. So be sure to check that out. So to get tickets to the tower, you have to come to the bottom where the parking is and the tickets are down here. They only let so many people in at a time, so make sure you get them early. Um, I don't know that we're actually gonna have time today, but we'll see, I'm gonna go check. We were able to get a timed ticket for a half hour later, and so we entered into the museum that's right in the ticket office house, where it shows you the timeline of the lighthouse, Roman ships and how they used to dock here, the trade routes, and so much more. It's definitely worth checking out while you're in the area. We went down, got the tickets, came back up, and now we're just waiting for our turn to go in. It is free on Mondays, but you, like I said, you do have to reserve that time, so just be sure of that. While the exterior of the lighthouse doesn't seem that old when you first look at it, it has been well preserved. Once you enter into the lighthouse, you get a better sense of its age. You see Roman ruins via a walkway that traverses them. 
Outside the lighthouse, the stones are made up of fortified, revamped, and restored stones from the 18th century. The original lighthouse was built in the first century BCE by the Romans. It stood around 82 feet or 25 meters tall, and after the renovation, now stands 187 feet or 57 meters tall. If you look closely at the stones, as you go up the stairs into the top of the tower, you can st still see keystones from archways that were built into the tower to make it stronger, as well as notches from iron crimps that were then covered in lead that would have made the structure more solid, especially against the wind and waves of the Atlantic Ocean. All right, here we go. All the way to the top. I'm having Isabel go behind me so that if I need her to push me up the stairs, She's going to be the workhorse behind this. JK, JK. At each landing or level, which there are about four of them, you can take a break from the 234 stair climb. The educational boards are both in Spanish and English. It allows you to catch your breath and then move on to the next level. There are also some small windows that you can peek through just to see how far you have climbed. When you get to this domed room, this is where the original Roman lighthouse stopped. It ran by lighting olive oil. Today, the lighthouse extends several meters above this and is run now by electricity. Apparently this is an old prison, but they don't really use it for anything, but it's a really cool area. And then this is like an office building with the offices in that square. And then you can walk out to this jetty and the views are really good for the ocean. Is it really even a beach trip if you don't get ice cream? This is right at the base of Hercules Tower. so. I think I deserve a little treat after all those stairs. There's moments on vacation where you feel cool. What could be cooler than eating an ice cream next to a Roman lighthouse? Be jealous. It was sent on to Paseo de Maritimo. This is a 5.6 mile or nine kilometer walk that goes around the city to the many famous sites of A Coruña. The death of the beloved sardine. Coruña has some unique and quirky festivals, including the death of the sardine that happens here at Playa de San Amaro. It is where a sardine is thrown from the pier in solemn prayer and worshipped for the life that it gives to the many restaurants and their menus. If sardines aren't your thing or you miss the festival, it is still a blue flag beach, which means it doesn't have a very strong current and is great for taking a dip in the Atlantic Ocean if you can stand the chilly waters. Our next stop is the old city walls of Coruña, where Maria Pita led the defense against the British pirate Francis Drake, who came with his 5,000 men to try to overtake the city. Her heroism is legendary, and she is celebrated throughout this town, as are many women here. Coruña is also part of the Celtic Camino, so those traveling from the Celtic countries, this was part of their path on their way to Santiago. You can't come to Europe without visiting at least one church. I suggest, when in Coruña, going to Iglesia de San Francisco. Every year on January 17th, 
animals are blessed in this church for the Saint Antonio Abad. One thing about Spain that is especially unique is that because they were in a civil war during World War II, many of their buildings were not bombed because they did not participate in World War II. So these medieval churches are especially well preserved. Like this one, it was built in 1674 and was so ornate and peaceful and just gave this vibe of a very small Spanish town. The church also happens to be right next to the Military Museum of Coruña you can pop into as well. There is also a map of Coruña and some of the best spots to see in the city right near here, so make sure to take a photo of that. The best part about traveling, though, is that you have time to get lost in the old medieval cities like this. Whether it's intentional or unintentional, like ours was this day, it still is something that I highly suggest doing no matter where you travel to. I just love walking in these medieval cities because it just is so different from where I live. The lanterns that you see on the, the homes and the gallerias that are characteristic for Coruña. And we're going into, oh, look at this house. So if you go down this street and around the corner and on the other side, you'll find the house of Emilio Pardo Bazan, Bazan. And she was a famous poet here that did some analysis of some monks' writings and became very famous from it. Unfortunately, they are doing some construction there, so we weren't able to see it today. So always double check because as Isabel has told me frequently, of everything in Spain, the favorite word here is depende. It depends if it's open, it depends if it rains, it depends if it's sunny. You can't even ask, have a good answer of how the weather is because depende. So we came back around the corner and we're gonna go into this gorgeous church. It was one of the oldest in Coruña, was it? Yeah, oldest in Coruña, built in the 12th and 13th century. This is Iglesia de Santiago, a church in Coruña founded in the 12th century. It became a historic monument on the 18th of August, 1972. This is the oldest church in Coruña and funnily it was used by city authorities to meet in the atrium in the 14th and 15th centuries to discuss different politics of the city so they could stay out of the chilly winds that blew in from the Atlantic. The next stop was Town Hall, the meeting place and where often concerts take place during the summertime in Coruña. It was built in 1918, it has a glass oculus with 15 arches adorning its front. The mayor's office is in here and it has the most important clock collection in Spain. But it depends on if it's open or not it is a free admission but you have to do a guided tour so check it out if it's open or not <laughs> maria pita square this is where the 30 foot or 9 meter statue of maria pita who was born in 1565 is celebrated as a hero of coruña the legend goes that she was assisting her husband husband in the charge of the defenses of coruña Filled with rage at what they were doing with her city, she fought her way to Pirate Drake's brother, snatched the banner he was carrying, and stabbed him with it. Such a badass woman. It was so demoralizing for the troops that 12,000 men to have their commander killed by a woman that they withdrew from the city. 
tapas and connecting with people in the community are such an essential and culturally defining experience that you have to participate in yourself if you plan to visit Coruña. People are out from 8 p.m. until 3 or 4 a.m. talking with friends, eating food, and having a great time. You can also find a lot of shopping down several streets near this area. Being able to speak enough Spanish to have a conversation with the owner of this shop opened up my eyes to a whole new world of being able to connect with people while you're on the road. I've always kind of struggled, believe it or not, with meeting new people, especially where I live. But when I travel, somehow it just seems easier for me. After grabbing a few souvenirs from her shop and bonding over our mutual thyroid disorders, I headed over to Orzan Beach to catch the sunset over the gorgeous Atlantic Ocean. All right, so I hate to admit it, but we had a very slow morning, mostly because of yours truly. I think we were up till what, like 2 a.m.? Something like that. <laughs> Just chatting and having a good time. And all of that aside, this is day two of A Coruña. Um, Isabel is out with us. Russ is back at home chilling out because we have another two days of great fun. But we're here at Castle San Anton. We're going to go inside, kind of check it out. So let's head in. Jesus and supposed to represent like the two kings apparently said nothing online about this being a convent so that's what's good about having somebody like Isabel with me that she can actually tell me what the signs say because they aren't in English so just be aware make sure you bring your Google Translate there's a function on there where you can take a picture of what you're looking at and have it translated like that Isabel's behind us here saying that these are the shields of the town. And the other one was shields of noble families. Oh, look at that. It's the Tower of Hercules. And you can see the bones underneath. That's yeah. so cool. So you can see the old door latches where the doors were hanging and where it locked at the top. That is so cool. When you come into this interior, they do have a lot of their stuff in English, including some papers that explain things. If you do come to visit Castle San Anton, they do have restrooms here, which I know this is gonna sound really stupid, but it always makes me giggle because who else can say that they've peed inside of a castle? <laughs> It's a cistern. So if you want a secret entrance into the castle, I guess these are the dredges that you swim through here. And then you have your entrance to the castle. So if you see the boat, there's these stone steps. You gotta come down or up, and that's where the cistern is. Then you come out here, you see this giant furry boat.
this place is really cool. Definitely worth a visit. It's only about two euros and it's right by Old Towns. Take a stop. It's, you learn so much about the culture and the history here. It just goes back to the irony, like it's just blowing my mind. Okay, so these stairs, they're kind of scary. So this is the well. If you come over and look down into it, it goes all the way down to the cistern that I showed you. Got a grumpy looking seagull over here. You've got great views, buddy. I don't know what you're complaining about. The main thing about Coruña is just the chill vibe of its people, of the town. It really felt like a vacation and I hope the next couple of minutes will help capture the feeling of being there. Well, it was a fabulous day in A Coruña, so I will wrap this video up here. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share it with a friend because more the merrier. See you in the next one, and stay tuned because it's all about Camino de Santiago y Compostela de Santiago. Santiago de Compostela. There we go. <laughs> Still practicing my Spanish. See you in the next one.